For nine years in a row, NASA has been rated the best place to work in government. And they're sending people back to the moon and eventually onto Mars. Pam Melroy is NASA's deputy administrator. She's a former combat and test pilot and former astronaut. Carla Smith-Jackson is Deputy Chief Acquisition Officer and Assistant Administrator for Procurement at NASA. Ladies, welcome to the program. Pam, I want to Thank start you. with you. Thank uh, you. Why are we going back to the moon? Didn't we already do that? Well, Mimi, we're going back to the moon to stay this time, which is very different. I often compare uh, Apollo to um, uh, Contiki, which was a uh, uh, Norwegian explorer wanted to prove that it was possible to cross uh, the Pacific Ocean in a primitive raft uh, for you know proving that it was possible to do. And uh, when you look at the capabilities that we had, I mean, the size of the computer, it had less computing power than your phone. Uh, we proved it was possible, but we should be thinking about our trip to the moon more like the Mayflower. We're going to stay and uh, we're going to have a sustainable presence and we're going to learn how to do science uh, with humans on the surface of another planet to prepare us to go to Mars. So it's been 52 years since NASA first landed a human on the moon. You mentioned that obviously technology is way more advanced than it was back there, but is it fundamentally the same process? to get back to the moon? Well, uh, we definitely have some changes. Uh, the uh, fact that we were going essentially on a short camping trip um, had a big impact on the design of the vehicles. Uh, they, they basically had the a very limited capability. Uh, since we intend to stay, we're not looking at uh, so much at disposable vehicles anymore, but at reusable vehicles. And uh, so you can uh, see that in the Orion uh, spacecraft, which is the only vehicle right now that can carry humans into deep space since Apollo. But it's much larger. It's meant to carry more people, four people, and uh, to bring back uh, a significantly greater amount of science. And Carla, what's the latest on the timelines for the Artemis mission? Are you going to get back to the moon on time? Yes, we're working towards those milestones now, collaborating with our industry partners to make sure that we make all the right interim steps, incentivizing the right behavior so that we can achieve our goal. Well, Carla, I would imagine that the procurement process is also quite different now than it was 52 years ago. You know, back then the federal government did everything and now you're dealing with private companies. Right. So right now what we're focusing on is partnership with industry. We're kind of making the transformation from just the make buy to more innovative ways, um, leveraging commercialization, um, looking at ways where um, our industry partners can amortize their development costs throughout the life of that usable um, launch or space vehicle. Um, we're looking at ways for them to make private investment and then for them maybe to retain things like data rights and um, looking for innovative ways to uh, make payments and offset their costs for the long term, which makes it more affordable for us as taxpayers, as well as um, leveraging the commercialization of the space economy. So Carla, what, what would you say are the biggest challenges for getting to the moon in five years? Uh, you know, I understand, for example, um, getting new spacesuits has become a challenge. What, what are you doing to overcome those kinds of obstacles? It, it's really interesting. Um, it's an exciting time to be at NASA, NASA procurement, because we, we have multiple, uh, we call them complex um, acquisitions with uh, space. We have the suits procurement. Um, we are leveraging a commercial model there. Um, it's a services delivery model versus a hardware delivery model. Um, we also are looking at the human landing system. Uh, we leveraged a broad agency announcement. We're trying to maintain competition throughout the life of most of our procurements and then transition to this um, way that we we can leverage the cost by delivering the service and the hardware comes with the service and then we partner through the public partner part I'm sorry the private partner private public partnerships um, to be able to work together as a team to accomplish our goals and meet our schedule well Pam uh, walk me through um, President Biden's proposed 2022 budget for NASA and what it will do for the agency assuming Congress uh, approves it 
that's right. The 2022 budget uh, affirms the continuity of purpose, uh, which is very, very important when you're putting together a strategy that is uh, going to take you 20 to 25 years in the future. It's really important uh, not to uh, change that strategy. There's always uh, evolution and uh, the capability to uh, incorporate new information, but the 22 budget supports a return to the moon so that we can achieve the objectives that we need to have in science and technology operations and sustainability, which is basically infrastructure that allows us to stay on the surface of the moon. And uh, the budget supports that. Uh, we are engaged in looking um, out ahead and saying, okay, what is it that we're gonna need to start working on next year and the year after that uh, to lay in uh, a, really a 20 year plan uh, to get to Mars. And what's interesting about that is uh, 10 years ago, or maybe a little bit more when I was uh, flying, there was basically uh, a large monolithic human spaceflight program. It was called the Space Shuttle. And then of course we built the International Space Station and when the Space Shuttle ended, we transitioned to that large single program. Now what we have stretching out in front of us is the SLS rocket, Orion, the spacecraft, the uh, exploration ground systems, the human lander system to the surface of the moon. Looking ahead, we're gonna have to have a habitat. We'll have to have some kind of transportation system so that our astronauts can do science on the surface of the moon. And then we need to be thinking about the Mars transport vehicle, Mars entry vehicle and a descent, and then an ascent vehicle to get back to the transport vehicle and come back. And when you start thinking about that, our acquisition strategy really has to be aligned to the entire 20 year approach. We need to think very carefully about each element of that. And so that's what we're trying to do and lay that in uh, that budget in for the future. What I'm worried about a little bit is the Artemis program, the space launch system uh, is what takes the crew into space. It costs $2 billion per launch. And NASA's whole budget is around 20 billion. How is that going to work? Uh, that's a really good question. And it's one that we're pretty focused on right now, uh, understanding uh, how to, uh, as we go forward, we're, we're really almost past the development phase. We have to do some test flights, uh, but the rocket is being stacked right now. And uh, we intend to launch, uh, we're hoping by the end of this year. So uh, as we move past uh, development into the operations and the sustainment uh, phase of that vehicle, uh, th this is where we're focused right now is how to bring the cost down so that uh, the price per launch uh, can go down. Uh, one of the things about rockets is the more you fly them, uh, the more you amortize the cost of the infrastructure needed to assemble and uh, and and launch them so uh, that's that's the other thing that we're focused on is you know really understanding that launch cadence so that we can optimize around it i want to ask you about the earth science side for nasa what's the agency doing to monitor and address climate change uh, nasa is really proud of our role in uh, being the eyes in the sky uh, that's what we do we uh, build, launch, and um, uh, assemble the satellites that allow us to look down and gather data on the Earth. And in partnership uh, with NOAA, who has operational responsibility for dissemination of data such as weather, uh, we partner with them, but we work closely with them to make sure that we're measuring the right things. and. Uh, in the current budget, uh, the fiscal 22 proposal, uh, we have substantially upped our uh, proposals to work in the climate area, in particular what we're calling the Earth System Observatory, to really systematically take a look at what the most important parameters that we should be measuring and studying uh, to provide those who have the responsibility to make decisions about what to do around climate change have the data they need. And you know, the first A in NASA is for aeronautics. What are you doing in aeronautics that's pushing the envelope? 
we're excited to say that the aeronautics directorate is doing some very interesting work uh, around sustainability, green aviation. Uh, in particular, uh, we have an initiative uh, that we are putting together that uh, will uh, take us further in reducing emissions. Uh, we, we want to meet the targets of reducing uh, the emissions by half uh, by 2050 and uh, potentially even more than that. And that's around um, some really novel systems that allow engines to burn substantially less fuel at altitude. Uh, some of that actually has to do with the structure of the aircraft. Um, we have a long history at, at NASA in supporting the uh, aviation industry. And that's why the US aviation industry is really at the top of, of the world in terms of capability. And uh, we intend to lead the way for sustainability in the future. And Carla, Pam talked about the mission to Mars. Do we really have the, the money and the wherewithal to get that far? I believe we do. Um, it's really an exciting time, as I mentioned earlier, um, because we are able to leverage a number of different buying techniques, um, longer term contracts, like I mentioned before, collaborating with industry. We do a lot of um, back and forth discussion with ways that we can incentivize the right behaviors. Pam mentioned amortizing development costs throughout the life of the program, um, using some commercialized or commercialization techniques that are not normally found um, if you use a strictly uh, traditional FAR type contract. Contract. And so um, a number of these things, along with um, maintaining competition throughout the life of uh, these procurements, will make them much more affordable and make our schedules achievable. And Pam, I can't let you go until I ask this last question. What's more stressful, going into space on the shuttle or being the number two at NASA? I'll tell you what, when you're, uh, uh, I, we may have some challenges, but my uh, life is not in danger when I go to work <laughs> these days. So uh, I, I actually, it's, it's a tremendous honor actually to, uh, to uh, move from leading a crew uh, going into space to uh, being a part of the leadership team of the entire enterprise. Uh, and it's it's thrilling and it makes me very happy. Well, we appreciate your leadership and on both sides.